should not come as a surprise, as Zimbabwe's mines minister promised he would do so. But the country reportedly sold $160 million in rough with Kimberley process certificates. But this now presents a challenge to the scheme and to those member countries where sanctions are in place. Partnership Africa Canada warned the pipeline that these exports are illegal. Well, I think the, the message to industry is, is the, the same message that should also be sent to all KP participants, and that is that uh, uh, there has to be a, a, a unified and very clear response to this um, uh, of rejection, that, uh, that any of these diamonds have to be, uh, uh, to be quarantined and, uh, and uh, not let into, into their countries, particularly processing countries such as uh, India. Um, I think that uh, we've seen, the, from what we've heard so far, $160 million worth that was sold uh, last week uh, have, have been bought, bought by four Indian companies. I think all the previous exports from Morangi have gone to India. Uh, so I think this really does put a lot of pressure, particularly on India uh, and its um, industry, uh, to really make a decision about whether they want to have their, their own greed or their own uh, bottom line trump the integrity of the Kimberley process. They have to make a very tough decision. And I think India, as a, as a government, has to ask itself about whether it wants to aid and abet uh, Zimbabwe in, in, uh, in what could potentially destroy the Kimberley process. The KP is expected to communicate with members shortly as they continue negotiating with Zimbabwe on a compliance agreement. It is expected that the KP will not have endorsed Abiy Chakani's recent Marangi certificates and the trade body will urge country members to be extra vigilant in trading these goods as they appear on the market. Sotheby's sale in Geneva was indeed magnificent. Take a look at just a sample of the top lots that sold this week. From a private collection, Sotheby's sold this diamond necklace and brooch signed by Adler, featuring a graduated line of 39 brilliant cut diamonds. The brooch set with similar stones. Both were mounted in platinum and sold for almost $2.4 million. From the property of a gentleman, this important 20.18 carat emerald cut diamond from Harry Winston was set between tapered baguette diamond shoulders and mounted in platinum. It sold for well above the high estimate of 1.6 million Swiss francs for almost $2.5 million. This fine, fancy, intense pink diamond ring sold above estimate and featured a 4.59 carat pear-shaped pink diamond which was flanked by similarly shaped stones and mounted in platinum and pink gold. Hammer price with buyer's premium came to $2.8 million. Lawrence Graff bought the top lot. This exceptionally important and exquisite fancy intense pink diamond of 24.78 carats VVS2 Type 2A featured a round cornered rectangular step cut diamond set between shield shaped diamond shoulders and set in platinum. The price, a record $1.862 million per carat. Sotheby's total sale fetched a record $105.1 million and was 82% sold by lot. Christie's, too, held its Geneva Jewel sale. For details, be sure to check diamonds.net. Earlier this month, ABN AMRO filed a $22 million insolvency action against polarized diamonds in Montreal and Toronto. Further to the filing, the courts placed the diamond firm into receivership and its assets are being reviewed. The receivers found that in addition to the bank, Polarize owes members of the trade $21 million. Preliminary assets were about $13.5 million, 7.7 .7 million of which were inventory. The receiver said Polarize is no longer operating and that it was very unlikely the debt of more than $40 million will be covered. Here is a look at how precious metals prices performed this week. For all the latest industry news, please visit diamonds.net and follow us on Twitter at twitter.com slash